Hello everyone. The internal resistance of the battery is one of the main indicators of its performance and its capabilities. In this video, I will show you how to find out the internal resistance of any battery using simple calculations, as well as using a special device. But first of all, I want to remind you about the Invex Lab Telegram channel, there you will find a lot of useful and interesting information from the field of electronics and modern technologies, and now a valuable prize draw is being held there, in order not to miss this important event, join the Telegram channel. The link to it will be in the description below this video. How does the internal resistance affect the battery's performance? This is clearly seen in the illustration. Any battery is a source of electromotive force. But since nothing is perfect, the battery initially has negligible internal resistance. Over time, it gradually increases for various reasons, ranging from improper operation to natural wear and tear. And this in turn leads to the fact that the battery gives less current, takes longer to charge and discharges faster. Therefore, measuring the internal resistance is a very necessary thing in diagnosing the condition of the battery. In this video, I measure the internal resistance of an 18,650 lithium-ion battery, an alkaline battery, and also a carlite acid battery. To determine the internal resistance of the battery, it is enough to use Ohm's law and make some calculations using this formula. This method has a certain margin of error, but still gives some idea of the state of the battery. Well, in order to get the most accurate values of the internal resistance, as well as to double check my calculations, I will use such a wonderful device. This is a battery internal resistance tester. The device is very useful, it is available in two color options, gray and red. The model of this device is RE502. Its technical characteristics are indicated on the back of the box, which we will pay attention to a little later. Inside the box there is a cloth case in which it is very convenient to store the device and its accessories. Instructions are inside the case. The technical characteristics of this device are indicated here. The measured voltage is from 0 to 12 volts. The measured resistance is from 0 to 500 ohms. The maximum input voltage is 120 volts. It must be permanent. Alternating voltage cannot be applied. The current strength when measured is from 50 milliamps to 50 microamps. The measurement speed is 3 times per second. The frequency of the verification signal is 1 kHz. The measurement method is a 4-wire system. This device can measure the internal resistance of almost all types of batteries and accumulators. Lead acid batteries, lithium ion, nickel cadmium and alkaline batteries are listed here. And here is the device itself. It has compact dimensions, there is a protective rubber bumper on top and bottom. In the upper part of the tester there is a Type-C connector for charging, a flashlight and a connector for connecting probes. The screen in this device is large and occupies the main part of the front side. There are four buttons under the screen. The first button is to turn on and off the device, as well as switch to settings mode. The next two buttons are to increase and decrease the voltage level of the filter, as well as to turn off the flashlight in the backlight of the device. The fourth button is to enable and disable the relative measurement mode, as well as the sound signal. Also included with the device is a USB Type-C charging cord and Kelvin measuring clips. The voltage of the measured battery is indicated in yellow at the top of the screen, there is also an analog scale at the top. And the measured internal resistance of the battery is indicated at the bottom. There is also a battery level icon. Briefly pressing the first button turns on the settings. The minimum and maximum filter voltage setting mode. 
That is, if the measured voltage goes beyond the scope of this filter, the device emits an audible signal. The next time you press this button, you can select the system language, English or Chinese. Long press of the second button turns on and off the flashlight. You can also use it to select a manual or automatic measurement range. The next button also switches the automatic and manual voltage measurement range. If you press and hold it, you can turn on and turn on the backlight of the screen. The fourth button enables relative measurement mode, but it is most often used to reset all values before measuring. And a long press of this button turns on and off the sound signal. There is also a calibration mode in this device. To start it, you need to enter the settings and then simultaneously press these two buttons. The calibration here is multi-step. To make it, we need reference resistors, but since I don't have them, I won't do it. Well, the device is wonderful, a minimum of settings and very convenient operation. I'm going to check it out now. In the description below this video there will be a link by clicking on which you can read reviews about this device and, if desired, buy it at a bargain price. Now I'm going to measure the internal resistance of a lithium-ion battery, an alkaline battery, and a carbide acid battery. First, I will try to calculate the internal resistance using the formula, and then I will check it with this tester. In order to calculate the internal resistance of the battery using the formula, you will need a multimeter to measure the voltage, as well as the load resistance. I will use a resistor with a resistance of 2.2 ohms and a power of 5 watts. I will record the measurement results in this notebook. First of all, I will measure the voltage of this battery without load. 4.3 volts. Now I will connect the load resistance to the battery and measure the voltage again. The voltage is 3.91 volts. At the top I wrote down the formula by which I will calculate the internal resistance of the battery. This formula is Ohm's law. To determine the resistance, you need to divide the voltage by the current strength. From this formula, only the current strength is currently unknown. It could be measured with a multimeter. But since we know exactly the nominal value of this resistor, it is very easy to calculate the current strength. Here again, Ohm's law applies. The voltage under load is divided by the resistance. The current strength is 1.7 amperes. All the data from this formula is available and now it is possible to calculate the internal resistance of this lithium-ion battery. The voltage drop was 0.12 volts. Now divide this value by the current strength. The result is multiplied by 1000 to convert it into milliamps. The internal resistance of this battery is 67 milliamps. Now let's see what the tester shows. The tester shows almost 44 milliamps. According to calculations, this lithium-ion battery is already on the verge of its capabilities. And the tester shows that he is still fine. The difference is. There is a difference of 20 milliamps between my calculations and the readings of the device. Now we measure the internal resistance of this alkaline battery. The no load voltage is 1.54 volts. With the load resistance, the voltage dropped to 1.35 volts. I'll calculate the current strength. It turns out to be 610 milliamps. We calculate the internal resistance of the battery. The voltage drop is 0.19 volts. Divide this value by the current strength. 
multiply by 1000 to convert to milliamps. The internal resistance of the battery is 311 milliamps. I measure the internal resistance of this battery using a tester. The device shows approximately 170 milliamps. The calculation according to the formula indicates that it is time to throw away the battery, and according to the tester it will still work, although not for long. The difference between the calculations and the tester's measurement is almost two times. Now I'm measuring the internal resistance of a lead acid battery. The no load voltage is 12.5 volts. I will connect an incandescent lamp to this battery as a load. The voltage under load is 12.37 volts. The current strength in this case needs to be measured with a multimeter, because the resistance of the lamp coil varies depending on whether it is turned on or off. The current strength is 1.79 amperes. Now you can calculate the internal resistance of the battery. The voltage drop was 0.15 volts, divided by the current strength. Multiply by 1000 to convert to milliamps. The result is 83 milliamps. Judging by this figure, the battery has long been ready for landfill, but at the same time it is in a working car and there were no problems with it. Now I'm measuring the resistance of this battery with a tester. The device shows about 8 milliamps. Now that sounds like the truth. Why there are such discrepancies in the measurements is not entirely clear. If you have any suggestions about this or you noticed an error in my calculations, then write about it in the comments. But it is quite obvious that this battery tester from the company Tooltop gives accurate data that correspond to reality. The device is accurate and useful. With its help you can determine the condition and performance of any battery in just a few seconds. This concludes this video. If you liked it, then click the subscribe button so that you don't miss the new video on my channel, which will appear very soon. I thank you for watching and see you soon.